Is February the 2nd it's almost lunchtime I've had a full morning I was up bright and early picked away on my sweater for a little bit I got some dyeing done packed orders um, what else worked on laundry just straightening up we're having company tonight so it's one of those like my kitchen table tends to be a catch-all and right now I am into water painting again <laughs> just playing when I have a minute so have to clean up that mess and anyway yeah so I hope everybody's having a good Friday for me that always means happy hour with my bestie Jane we always go to um, a brewery usually or a restaurant have a drink catch up and always end up having supper together so we are gonna go to Greystone around 3 30 for a beer and another one of our girlfriends, Karen, is going to join us. And my son even messaged this morning and said, you want to meet for a beer? So I said, yep, we're already going to be at Greystone. So we're all going to go for a beer later and then come back here for supper and probably play cards and, I don't know, board game. It, Like I said, it was a quiet uh, January. So uh, having some friends over tonight will be fun. And I love playing cards. I'm going to make a lasagna. I've made that before on this vlog, but I'll show you again how I make it. It's it's super easy. It is a spinach and mushroom lasagna and um, yeah, good cozy comfort food. It's right. It's not raining. Sorry. It's uh, snowing today and if the sun's not shining or anything, it's kind of dreary and wet out. So I think a nice uh, yummy hearty lasagna will be good tonight and it's e it's something that it's easy to make ahead of time and then I can just warm it up when everybody gets here which actually it's better because it just the starch gets makes the uh, lasagna thicker so I'll show you how I make that again for anybody that's watching for the first time I'm um, gonna make some cookies I think I'll make the campsite cookies uh, the, it's from that recipe book cake and loaf uh, a few uh, other a few other people on YouTube have talked about that recipe book, so um, I'll show it to you before I make the cookies. It's it's an excellent book. I've made probably four or five things out of it so far, and everything's been a hit. It's, it's very straightforward to make. So yeah, I think I'll do those cookies. They're so yummy. They've got like marshmallows and Smarties, graham crumbs, chocolate chips. What else? Anyway, so that's my afternoon after I finish up talking here I'm gonna make the, the lasagna and straighten up and um, and then Jane is gonna grab me around 3 30 and we'll go grab Karen so I'm gonna show you what I've been knitting on I started this a few weeks ago maybe a week nah, maybe like even just a week ago I've been getting up super early so this is seems like a lot of knitting for a week but I have I can spend like if I get up at like 4.30 or 5, which I know is ridiculous, I don't like it. This is like perimenopause torture, I think, but I'm wide awake, so I just get up and make coffee. I'm binge watching Vera on, it's on Prime. It's uh, it's on the Brit box. It's a British like uh, mystery, kind of like Murder, She Wrote, but a British version, and it's called Vera. She is just this sassy old thing, and she solves murders, and I am hooked it's there's 13 seasons and I think I'm on season like nine or ten so I play that and I knit for like a good hour sometimes two hours just depending on how horribly early I get up so I started after all that garter knitting I was working on the blanket made my scarf and that was all I knit in January I was ready for a project so I've been wanting to knit this for a while. I actually downloaded the pattern when we went to Rhinebeck. It's called the Busan Sweater. I'll put the details on the screen. I saw people at Rhinebeck with it. It's beautiful. It's this oversized sweater with like a little funnel neck and then this big chunky cable that goes down the front of it. I love it. It's beautiful. So I have been plugging away at that and I'm loving knitting this. 
I'll show you what I've gotten done. So, oh, and it's in my my Tanny Casey Fox bag. Fox is my maiden name. And I decided to get this when I went to the uh, Cake Palooza when we went to New York. Anyway, I love it so much. It's adorable. So here's my sweater. It's a top-down knit. I am holding, I, 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 I want to say it calls for DK held with mohair. I, don't, I can't remember the gauge. I am always kind of rogue with what I tend to do. I don't gauge swatch. But things always kind of work out. And if anything, if things are just a little bit looser than it should be, that's a good thing for me. <laughs> so I am holding together... I had this on hand, so I just I don't know where, why I ordered it, um, or if it came to me by mistake. But I had this uh, worsted, uh, non-superwash, yarn on hand, so I decided to dye it and use it for a future project. So I grabbed it and decided to use it for this. So I'm using it's a worsted weight, but it's a super like I'll show it to you. It's not a thick worsted. It's almost a DK. So this is it right here. And I'm holding it together with mohair. I'm using my colorway English Rose. And it's just a really soft baby pink. I, I guess, yeah, you can see up against my white shirt. I put it on Instagram the other day and I think people thought it was cream or white, but it is so subtle. It's such a light, light baby pink. And it's, I love it, it's so pretty. So you start at the top down. You start at the top, sorry. Work your way down. It's a raglan knit. Uh, you know, you've got some short rows. You've got some pretty detail for your raglan. I, I love cables. And it, this is like just this big, chunky cable. It's an easy knit. You know, you've got to, you've got to have your pen and paper. Keep track of, you know, which row you've got to start do your, um, whether it's your right leaning or your left leaning cable but it's not hard and it's flying. So I've got to knit 10 inches from the underarm. I'm gonna kind of pay attention where I am using maybe a bit of a heavier yarn. I don't want it to like be so long. It's like, you know, way past my bum or anything. So I'm gonna kind of pay attention to where I'm at and maybe not it might not matter. I might be able to do it a little bit shorter, but then the 10 inches under the underarm. Anyway, we'll see. I'll pay attention. But um, yeah, so it's going along beautifully. If you go on Ravelry or on Instagram and look at the hashtag, the Busan sweater, there's so many beautiful colors out there. My friend Suzanne is doing it in navy blue and it is gorgeous. And Suzanne, I need a, I need to make a navy blue sweater. That's something I don't, I don't have. I have so many pinks and grays, but I need navy blue. So that's going to be, um, is it called the Usen sweater? Anyway, it's by the same designer as this. That's going to be next on my list. If I remember, I'll put a picture of it up. Um, but I want to make it, and I probably would do it in navy. So anyway, I'm babbling. This is what I've been working on outside of uh, blanket knitting. I needed something a little more cerebral, and uh, this is it. I'm loving it. So, and thank you to Meg for suggesting for that, um, the skein of yarn I showed to you yesterday that was gifted to me, that beautifully handmade, or hand spun and hand plied. Um, Meg from Woolen Cookies mentioned um, the Cashmere Jason hat, and it's perfect. I looked it up on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. It's cables, and I think it's going to be the perfect pattern for that yarn. So I'm going to wind that up today, and even if I have a minute, I might cast that on once I get um, my house straightened up and food ready. So yeah, that's what's uh, on the go for knitting. And I got some happy mail yesterday. I ordered this, she had a pre-order. Most people know Turtle Pearl, Turtle Pearl Yarn. She's a Canadian dyer, Emily. She's a sweetheart. Um, I've bought her yarn in the past. I have, I think it's called Trench Coat. 
it's like that um the burberry plaid the the tan and the red and the black i have a skein of that so that i haven't used yet but anyway she did a pre-order for this and it's called kiss kiss so it's her valentine's day and i'll she put a picture in of how it kind of knits up i don't know i'm gonna try to show it there so i love pinks and browns and creams together i think it's so pretty so it's self-striping and i don't know if this is going to be socks i don't think so i think it's going to be mittens but but we'll see so i don't know if she has any more of this in her shop but check her out turtle pearl yarns i'm sure you've heard of her she does amazing self-striping and uh yeah so i had a a little valentine treat come in the mail yesterday but this was a pre-order i should have checked before I'm, sh I'm i'm sure it's still available if not i'm sure she could do it if you want it because it is gonna be so pretty so favorite things i didn't show anything yesterday but um i thought i should show some things that i love for this time of year so winter i'm dry like i have dry skin i've never like I could definitely use like a bottle of lotion a week. I don't know. Like I put it on before bed and in the morning after the shower. I always take a bubble bath at night too. So I go through a ton of lotions and I find that I haven't had luck summer. Okay. But um, there's a couple of really good ones by Dove. But this one is my latest that I absolutely love. And it is so nice and thick and so good for dry skin. So if you have dry skin this time of year or just like I, I have dry skin all year round, really. But this time of year, I really like to slather it on. So this is um, the Caudalie Replenishing Vegan Body Butter. I got this at Sephora and it's... It smells so good. It almost smells like like a little bit of that like almond oil undertone. Anyway, it's not it's not strong at all. This is wonderful. It is a great lotion and you know, one thing about Sephora, if you try it and I think you have like 30 days to like a product, if you don't like it, take it back. But I think if you need a really thick moisturizing body butter, you will love this. And I do take a bubble bath every night. I go through bottles of this. This is the Avene Zera Calm. It's um, it's a shower cream. It's for dry, sensitive skin, but it's for your face and body. So I use it as bubble bath and body wash when I'm in the tub, and I even wash my face with it. So this is my newest bottle. It's Avene Zera Calm. So this is wonderful if you needed like a really sensitive skin hydrating kind of uh, body wash love this I got this at shoppers drug mart um, I, I love a lot of the Avene products this is my night cream right now I am um, it's the Avene hydrants reach hydrants reach hydrating face cream anyway I'll just kind of put it there again I get this at shoppers drug mart there smells so good it reminds me of my mom i don't know why <laughs> when i it it's got like that fresh nivea cream cold cream kind of smell to it i love it but it's it's super hydrating i put a ton of this on before bed and yeah it's and i can still feel like it's kind of like it's not super tacky but i feel it on my skin like it really it's really, really nice. So, and I'll alternate with this as well. Summer Fridays is a brand that I love. I love their lip gloss. I've been using uh, one of their retinols. What else? They have a lot of good products. So this is the Jet Lag um, mask. It's just a hydration mask. It's a, it's a cream. Some people, I think, just put it on and then wash it off. I sleep with it on, but it's wonderful. So I've got that. Yeah, so I just wanted to kind of pass on a couple of my favorite things for uh, this time of year. If you're having, if you need some good moisturizing products, I'm really liking these. And like I said, this is awesome. It's super thick. This, same thing. It's really, really nice. So if you have a dry face, I don't think you would you could go wrong with this product. It's, it's nice. 
Anyway, okay, what else? I think that's it. I have got to go make that lasagna and get the cookies made. So hopefully, I don't know if it's going to snow much longer or not, but it looks pretty out. <laughs> okay, happy Friday, everybody. Let's go make a lasagna. Okay. Okay, so for this spinach and mushroom lasagna, the ingredients you're going to need are some mushrooms. I use two packages. I'll cut this in half and dice it up. You're going to saute your mushrooms with your diced up onion and throw in a couple of cloves of garlic. Uh, you're also going to need some spinach. I buy frozen spinach and I get like the two big cubes from the superstore and uh, thaw it out so that's all ready to go. I always use oven ready lasagna. I cannot ever be bothered to boil and drain and use other kinds so use the oven ready these are so easy <laughs> makes makes life a little simpler uh, two jars of spaghetti sauce you're gonna need some shredded cheese and a tub of ricotta so essentially you're going to layer you're going to layer your I always put this on the bottom of my dish just a little bit Put a layer of noodles, put a layer of your ricotta, a layer of the spinach, a layer of this, and a layer of this. And you're just gonna stack that three times. So I'll show you what I do. And I'm wearing my apron today. <laughs> this is my Sandy by the Lake Lakeside uh, apron. It's denim with the leather strap around the neck ties around your waist. It's beautiful. Yesterday, I got egg all over me. If you saw that in my video, when I cracked an egg and broke it open, it just went So, wear my apron today.
Dreams of 